In this video, I'm going to show how to wire up the VFD and 2.2 kilowatt spindle. This is a 220 volt version of the VFD, also known as the variable frequency drive. The main AC connections and spindle connections are located in this bottom section of the VFD here. You'll see that there are screw terminals within the housing of this VFD. The wires can run through this bottom section. It's just a rubber piece that comes out and the wires can be run into this location. Inside you'll see that there is a N, 220, and L. The N is for neutral and the L is for live. And on the far right here is the protective earth ground and it has the ground symbol. To power the VFD, I use a standard extension cord. The one I have I think is 16 gauge. I will cut off the female end because this will not be able to plug into the wall obviously. We'll need to keep this end because this one plugs into the wall. And I'll cut it right here, expose the, the conduits within about maybe one and a half inches, two inches, and then I'll add spay terminals to the ends of the, the conduits. I'll show you an example of doing one spay terminal. Once I've exposed the wires, I remove approximately half an inch or three eighths of an inch of the insulation off of each conduit. And I'll insert the stranded portion of this wire into the spay terminal and then crimp the section that the wire is inserted into. I'm gonna use this rubber piece to uh, provide a little bit of protection. So I'm just going to take uh, an X-Acto knife and cut through the center. And this way my wires can run through the center of this, maintaining as much protection for the internal circuit board. And now I'm ready to screw the terminals into this, into these posts. I'm going to start with the protective earth. Make sure you don't have this plugged in while you're doing this. So I put in the live next, and now I'm putting in the neutral. Now we're ready to go ahead and wire the spindle, the U, V, and W. The U, V, and W are the three wires that's necessary for the three coils of the, of the spindle. There are four in the back here, so you'll need to use the pins one, two, and three. The spindle will come with a connector for the back of the spindle, and it is the female part of the connector. And to separate the connector, or to get to the insides of the connector, you just screw this off. You can remove this. Make sure to put this back before you put this section back on. And then you have, at the back here, this is a strain relief. So when you put the cable in here, you'll screw down these two screws, and it'll provide some, some locking for the cable, so the cable can't be pulled out very easily. And the posts on this connector are little cups that you'll need to use for soldering. The U terminal here is wired to the number three terminal on the connector. The number three terminal is located right here, opposite the little notch on the side. Number one pin is here, number two pin is here, and number three pin is here. And U is connected to the number three pin. Number one is connected to the V terminal and the number two pin is connected to the W terminal. The connector has small cups to apply solder. So what I generally do is I just apply some solder here because it, it also applies some flux. Then I'll tin the other piece of the wire, the, the exposed portion of the wire. Then I'll just touch the two and heat the both together and they'll fuse together. What we generally do is we'll add some heat shrink and on each wire we'll also add heat shrink so we can further separate and insulate the wires when they're installed. I've already added the spade terminals, so I'm just gonna run those through this rubber piece here. I'm gonna start with the number three pin, which is U. Next we'll do the number one pin, which is V. And then the last one, which is the number two pin, which is W. I'm gonna place the rubber piece back on the back of the or on the bottom of the VFD. There's a little tiny lid inside, I'm just going to close it. On the front of the VFD, there is a removable control panel, and you have several buttons here that will control the spindle, and also you'll be able to modify the parameters within the VFD. The control panel has a potentiometer, that you can use to control the speed of the VFD. 
if you're not controlling it through your control program. You have a forward and reverse button. You have a, an advance button for, uh, for the display, a run, a stop. You have a program and a set button. You'll notice that there is a, another opening on the top of the VFD and then there's a panel that opens up here. And you'll notice that there are some terminals. There's some screw terminals along this section. The wires can be placed through this portion. These are all the digital uh, terminals. You'll only need um, somewhere between 24 and 22 gauge wire for these. Relatively small gauge. And within this terminal there's an X1, an X2, X3, X4. Those are specific controls. And then there's X5. You have a COM, which is the ground. And you have AI1, which is the analog input. And you have a 5 volt and a 12 volt. I'm not going to connect any of these digital wires in this particular video. You don't really need them to control the spindle. You can do all of the control using the control panel. I will leave the connection of these to another video. I'm going to connect the spindle connector, which is the UVW terminals, to the back of the spindle. And you have this ring here that will screw onto the back. Before you run the spindle for a, an extended amount of time, make sure that you put in the, the water tubing in the inlet and outlet on this section of the spindle. And make sure that you're running water through the spindle while you are operating it. Since I only have a 110 outlet at this location doing the video, I'm going to use a transformer, a step-up transformer with an output of 220 volts and it has a 220 volt input. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the VFD to the transformer, but I'm not going to turn it on yet. I'm going to use this to stabilize the spindle so I don't get hurt. I'm going to secure this a little bit so it doesn't pop off. I'm going to turn on the transformer and you'll see that the VFD turns on and it, because I was messing with this, the frequency is at 140 right now, and I can go all the way down to zero, and I can go all the way up to 400. 400 is 24,000 RPM, and zero is obviously not turning at all. So I'm gonna turn it up to maybe 105, and I'm gonna go ahead and press run. So you'll see that the spindle is turning, and when I turn it up, it'll increase in speed. So this should be 24,000 RPM at 400 hertz. You'll see that the run light is on. I'm going to press stop. And that will stop the spindle. You can press the F and R for forward and reverse. You'll see that this light changes. Right now it's in forward. Right now it's in reverse. So I'm gonna go ahead and press forward. I'm gonna bring it down to about 112 hertz. I'm gonna run it. And I noticed that it was spinning in this direction here. And that is the correct direction for the way you'd want the spindle to cut and for the end mills that, that we use. If the forward and reverse are not spinning in the direction that you would expect, then it's because you have the UVW connected incorrectly. And all you'll need to do is switch two of those wires. So let's say the U and V, you want to swap the U and V, you just take the U and you would put it in the V position and the V in the U position. It would be a lot easier to do that from this location here. You can also, if you want to, you can remove the nut completely just so you Make sure it doesn't come off and the collet. And now you'll have a much safer operation when you're testing it. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.